Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I source cars for people on a professional basis. Although most of the cars I source are between £1,000 and £5,000, very often I've been asked to show something a little bit cheaper on the channel and so I came up with No Budget Reviews, the series where we look at cars that you can buy in good condition with an MOT for under a thousand pounds and you can enjoy driving. We don't film this in an expensive manner, we don't use separate microphones, we don't use fluid head tripods, we don't even use a DSLR, but we do have a lot of fun. Sometimes once you've done something once, it's uh, often good to have another go at it. And uh, with this Mark VI Fiesta, I think we'd have another go at, uh, at one of these. I have one on the channel in the autumn of 2020, where Mr Richardson from Furious Driving actually managed to save one from, uh, well, being scrapped, I imagine. This is a 2006 Ford Fiesta 1.25 Freedom. One of my friends recently got this car and uh, she said I could film it and uh, obviously I jumped at the chance because a lot of you seem to like the last Fiesta video so why don't we do this as well. I mean, I've also done a Mark II and a Mark VII Fiesta on my channel but this is, uh, this is the Mark VI. I think the facelift that came in 2005 and this is a facelifted car, the last one was, uh, was a pre-facelift actually was quite successful, but I think the car looks looks even smarter than before. Now, it's not the most exciting shape or anything like that. It's um, one that's been around for a, a long, long time. You know, these cars were launched in 2002, and uh, the Mark 7 came in in 2008. So, relatively short production run in comparison to some generations of the Fiesta, but, you know, you, you see these absolutely everywhere, and uh, they're, sell, they're for sale for, well, you know, <laughs> well within the budget. Um, that uh, we set ourselves on no budget reviews. One of the things that should be working on, for some reason isn't on this car, is uh, the uh, remote key fob for the, the boot. Now you should just be able to press this button here and open the boot, but I'm actually just going to use the one on the dash to get in there. Ooh, that's not working either. We'll have to use the key then. How strange. It's really weird. Must be something wrong somewhere with this one. You see, it says uh, ZTEC ZTEC Freedom. I thought it was just called a Freedom. Anyway, so this car's done over a hundred thousand miles. Although the condition of it is actually quite good, considering that. Um, we'll just pull this back a little bit. There we go. Of that as well. Unlike the Mark V Fiestas, you don't have to sort of jack the spare wheel down. It actually sits in the in the boot like that. And we've got a full size alloy spare. That's very good. Don't really see much of that sort of thing these days. The entry level studio cars don't come with a split folding rear seat. Just bear that in mind if you're looking for one of these. It's got a nice little handle there if you're if you're not the tallest person. I think it looks quite smart about a little little. Uh, spoiler there, maybe like a sort of junior ZTEC S or even an ST on a good day. I've been told by my friend who owns this car that one of the things I must not do is to try to get in the back from the driver's side because this is broken and uh, it's quite a common problem on these actually. So just make sure that works if you're buying a three door Fiesta. Just get in here. It's always a bit of a problem when I'm doing this I'm on my own. Just close the door so I don't get run over. There you go, that works fine. Right, so I sit up here. Legroom's actually okay with the uh, passenger seat set to the sort of average position. There's my driving position there. I'm not particularly tall, I'm about 5 foot 11. And yes, the only thing I would say is there's no adjustable height um, seat belt here, so you do have to reach back quite a long way to get it. So you can see the uh, the handle for getting in the back from the driver's side is, is broken, um, which is a little bit annoying. Do have in here some uh, 
some speakers, or oh, the camera's not picking up very well. Um, no centre armrest or anything. I do get some rear headrest, which is, I don't think anything you got in the Rover 25 or the MG ZR, which is, which is good. Um, got some uh, places to put stuff as well, that's quite handy. No kind of centre console or anything in here, this is just, uh, um, you know, one of the sort of medium trims really, this car. I think the dashboard on th these facelifted ones is a lot nicer than the pre-facelift ones. It's actually soft touch, so we're going to have a look at that in a second. Right, I think I'm going to have to free myself from my self-imposed prison before we can get in the front, so uh, just bear with me a second, viewers. Okay, that's a lot better. This car looks a lot nicer than some of the others, which don't have things like colour-coded exterior door handles and alloy wheels. But as you can see, we do not have air conditioning in this model. So it probably based on the on the ZTEC rather than the ZTEC climate then. That's a nice news operate. We do have soft touch materials on this dash, which is really nice. I think this um radio is out of the uh, Mark II focus, so it's very similar to one. Um the air conditioning button would be down here, but yeah, we don't have it, so there we go. Similarly we don't um don't have certain other things, otherwise we'll need a blanking plate there. We still get a mirror of the sun visor, that's very important on a car like this. See if my uh, secret mission documents actually go into the glove box. If I bothered to clear the, clear the other stuff out of their views, it would have worked, but that's pretty good, it's not bad. Yeah, it feels feels good. It, it does for a car of this era. It feels quite solidly made. I prefer this interior to say the um, Corsa C, for example, that we had on no budget reviews towards the end of last year. There is the very famous Ford um, electric mirror switch that went into all kinds of things. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, if anyone knows how many cars that that switch was used in. Just drop that in the comments below. I'd be interested to, to know if you understand how many. So unfortunately that switch doesn't work um, for the boot, but you can just use the key like you steal on some of the older Fiestas. And those uh, electric window switches look very familiar too. Drive position's pretty good. I don't know in this car if we've got a seat height adjuster. Oh, we do, yeah, that's good. Excellent, we've got a seat height adjuster as well. Fantastic, uh, it's a leather trim steering wheel, not a plastic one, which is which is always better. And this car's also got an AUX input just down, just down there. Always nice to see, you know, cars of this era with normal handbrakes and normal, just five-speed gearboxes. Although one thing this car really does lack is more than one cup holder. There are sort of cup holders in the doors, but yes, it, it's it's something that um, really I should have thought about a little bit more, just giving more acreage of this area for putting cups in because by the mid 2000s that's the sort of thing people were looking for. Very nice clear instruments, little trip computer on here. Um, it's also gradated in the way that we prefer probably if uh, we're taking somebody out to learn to drive because it's 10, 30, 50, 70 which are uh, certainly 30, 50, 70 are some of the most important speed limits um, for learning to drive, so that's obviously obviously good. Well, here we are at the wheel of the Fiesta Freedom. I do like driving Mark Six Fiesta. I think they are actually really a lot nicer to drive than they appear. I do apologise for the mount bouncing around a little bit. The roads are a little bit rough in the borough of Eastley sometimes. This was for many years the basic engine for the Mark VI Fiesta and I guess I do call it the Mark VI even though in other countries it's actually known as a Mark V. In this country um, we seem to refer to it as the Mark VI because we split what is known in other countries as the Mark IV into two distinct Marks. Um, but I've always known these as a Mark VI, so that's what the name I'm going to use for them. 
This is the 1.25 litre ZTEC SE engine, which uh, was originally developed for the Mark IV with Yamaha. It's a 1242cc unit generating, in this case, 73 horsepower. There was a larger version of this unit as well, and uh, that was actually in the car that I tested back in 2020. Um, that Mr. Richardson helped to get back on the road. It was 1.4, which generated about 79 horsepower. There was also 1.6 with the, the Mark 6 all the way through the um, modern slice, and that generated 99 horsepower. It's quite worth seeking out actually that one, particularly if it's in gear trim. We need like a nice gear level trim in <laughs> the context of no budget reviews. Of course, the one that many of you will be familiar with will be the 2 litre version of um, the Mark VI Fiesta. It was only available after the facelift in 2005 and that was the VST. Those are really quite well known cars. I mean, they do handle quite sweetly. This is pretty good, to be honest. The ride and handling balance in one of these is so much better than something like, I don't know, a 9N Polo, which is uh, the one that was contemporary with this car. And also, the, the engine that most people would have gone for if they were, say, a learner or something like that, was this 1.25, and it's a much nicer unit in terms of its free revving nature than the 1.23 cylinder that would have been in the 9N Polo, which um, I think only offered either 55 or 65 horsepower. Right at the beginning of production of the Mark VI, there also was the old Endura E engine available that was a relative of the um, Kent or Valencia engine. That was a 1299cc engine. But that was only until I think early 2003 that was made. So it, if you happen to find one of those on the second hand market, and they're a very rare car indeed, I don't particularly recommend them, but for the sake of argument, those generate around 67 horsepower. There were also <coughs> some uh, some diesels, but due to controversial government legislation and all kinds of reasons, we don't talk about diesels on this channel. In terms of the range structure, it started off with the facelifted cars with the studio, which worked been up to the style. Style climate, ZTEC, ZTEC climate. The climate was uh, given to cars that um, had air conditioning. This one actually doesn't have it, um, which is a bit of a surprise considering it's got electric mirrors and and um, other stuff which uh, bottom range cars didn't get. This thing's really annoying. Still um, But yes, so studio, style, style climate, ZTEC, ZTEC climate, and the gear and the ZTEC S. The gear was a bit more luxury orientated, and the uh, ZTEC S was a bit more sporty. Then there was, of course, the ST with this facelift. The pre facelift models actually were a little bit different. Uh, the finesse was a bottom of the range, and then the LX was kind of uh, where style was, I think. But there were lots of special editions and we'll cover those in a, in a moment. This particular car, Freedom, came with the 1.25 and 1.4 engines only in 2006, but they did actually offer a uh, three and five door model, this is the three door car I drove in 2020 helpfully was a pre-facelift 1.4 5 door so we've actually covered quite a number of variations already. It's funny with these you know they 
come from an era where this was by far the most popular car in Britain and it, the Fiesta is not even the top 10 anymore for new car sales but just driving one of these around it's so easy to see why someone would actually want to uh, to, to own one of these it's, it's just quite a painless experience there are issues with these and uh, we will take a look at those a little bit later um, they're not a fault-free car but for a lot of people these were just either first cars or last cars or second cars or or anything really they have a lot of appeal even now and you can still pick these up in good condition for under a thousand pounds which is what no budget reviews is all about One of the things I thought I'd share with you is uh, some issues that are common with these Mark VI Fiestas. And uh, very helpfully, friend of the channel, Mike Humble, who's uh, Rover 75 V6, you would have seen on No Budget Reviews at the end of last year, has actually written a, a little guide for known faults and common problems. First of all, he talks about the... Um, old Valencia stroke Endura E stroke Kent engine and says that they are a bit rattly um, but it's very unlikely you actually buy a Fiesta with one of those but you know there, there you go. With the ZTEC SE petrol engines or Duratec or Sigma they've all three names have been used at various points in the past um, you do need to service them correctly. One thing you must do is make sure the cam belt's been done um, I think it's either eight years or 100,000 miles on one of these cars. And uh, if they run low on oil, um, they can shred the bottom end bearings, which uh, is not good. So it's rumbling or uh, deep noted clatter on idle. The cars can suffer from uh, brent, bent or broken steering racks. Um, if the car's got strictly wayward handling, that will be the thing. Um, next one I'll skip because, uh, well... There were some uh, forbidden fuel engines, but we don't talk about those on this channel. Uh, noisy gearboxes. Um, manual cars can suffer from drive shaft seals going hard and leaking transmission fluid onto the floor. Yeah, so if the gearbox chatters, um, or you can hear humming noise when sharp turning or, or a roundabout, the gearbox is ruined. This one's okay. Um, inconsistent idling. Uh, most of the time, that is an idle control valve and a system reboot by the diagnostic port with some Ford software. Coolant leaks, yes, this is uh, something that this car actually suffered from, and it's it's a common thing on this engine, because this engine went into all sorts of things, like the, uh, the Fusion and various other Fiestas, and, um, and the Focus as well. So um, they uh, do leak, leak from the water pump sometimes. Where the coolant pipes go into, 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 into the bulkhead to supply the heater, there can be dribbling, um, and a plastic heater blend valve can weaken, causing the temperature to not change, or the stub pipes to shear off, causing instant coolant loss. Um, it is quite easy to spot, though, and it can be a cheap and easy fix. Uh, sometimes there's probably the pipe going into the actual coolant reservoir as well. Sometimes the... Um, uh, where wash wipe can fail, um, it could be a fuse, um, but it could be a wiring harness. A general body condition. Now that these do rust, uh, just like most other cars of the era, um, so it's worth just paying attention to, to this. Um, and then, yes, clonking front suspension. This is also a problem on Mark Seven Fiestas, uh, which uh, is often the drop links. If it, if it's just a very kind of patter, pattering noise, and I have experienced this in a Fiesta, uh, then you might need to buy some um, anti-roll bar drop links. They're about £20, I think, for um, for the actual part. The labour's about, I don't know, less than an hour to do them, so it's not a huge problem. But if you've got things like, um, uh, you know, broken springs and um, worn bottom ball joints, and they are a bit more than just doing the drop links, and finally, there can be also electrical problems uh, with these as well. Just make sure everything works when you take one for a test drive.
So there we are viewers, the mount is in the way, as it always is, and uh, just driving through, uh, driving through town at the moment, it's a, you know, environment that many of these will be familiar with, and there is the lollipop person who I'm going to have to stop for, well there we go. It's a wonderful demonstration of uh, the kind of environment that a lot of these Fiestas would have found themselves in. I do like the little sweet gearbox in these. There was an automatic available. Um, I think the pre-facelift ones had a, a different one for the post-facelift, but most uh, Mark VI Fiestas will be available with this um, IB5 five-speed manual. And it's it's really good. It's the same gearbox was actually in Rover 25s, MGZSs, Rover Streetwises, Rover 45s, and MGZRs after the middle of uh, 2003 up to 1.6 litres and uh, with this forward gear knob on it it feels really really good I really really like driving <laughs> the Mark 6 Fiesta I I've sourced them for clients um, obviously the one that I drove last year was good they, 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 they drive so much better than the um, looks would have you suggest actually. As we conclude this video let's have a look at uh, some uh, Mark 6 Fiesta special editions. There was the Black, the Firefly, the Flame, the Freedom like this one the silver, the ST500, and then loads of variations of the word ZTEC. ZTEC Blue, ZTEC um, 30th, ZTEC S 30th Anniversary. Um, I think that came out in 2007 on the launch of the, um, uh, on the video anniversary of the launch of the Mark 1 into Britain, because it was launched in other places in 76. Um, ZTEC S Celebration and ZTEC S Red. So viewers, for the second time on the channel, should you consider a Mark 6 Fiesta as um, a car with your hard-earned budget of up to £1,000. Well, we've actually covered actually a few more problem areas than we did last time, and I think this might be a good option for many people. The main advantage of these is the way that they drive. The parts are really cheap, and you can get them serviced virtually anywhere. They're probably good for a home mechanic as well, if you're into that sort of stuff. But anyway, thank you ever so much indeed for watching this episode of No Budget Reviews. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video and leave a comment below. If you uh, wanted to join the channel as a member, then there's uh, a join button down below this video. That would be wonderful if you could do that. Please don't feel under the obligation to do so. And uh, we'll see you soon for more low-cost motoring.